In today's video, I will be continuing my series where native species fight back against invasive species. But today's video is going to be a little different. That's because today I am focusing on the beautiful country of New Zealand. And although New Zealand does have a lot of invasive species, it doesn't have a lot of native predators. Before humans arrived in New Zealand, its only native land mammals were bats. This meant that the native birds had very little to fear, apart from other native birds. This led to the evolution of many large flightless birds, but unfortunately many of these native birds are threatened today. The introduction of predatory mammals has had a massive negative impact on New Zealand's native birds, and their numbers have been declining over the past few hundred years. As well as this, New Zealand's native plants and fish have been suffering, and this is almost all down to invasive species. Luckily, there are some native predators that are more than happy to fight back, and in today's video I will be covering just a few of them, as I will be going through three native predators from New Zealand that help to fight against invasive species. And the first problem species I will be focusing on today is the European hare. Now this hare is native to Europe and Asia, and is among the largest hare species alive today. These mammals are generally nocturnal and shy in nature, but are sometimes known for their combative boxing displays. These fights are usually among males, but it's not rare to see a female hitting a male as well. These mammals mostly feed on grasses and herbs, but in their native range they are targeted by many predators. Famously, to get away from these predators, they are able to reach very high speeds, but the young tend to rely on their camouflage. The European hare was first introduced into New Zealand in 1851, and this was to provide sport, and also to improve the food supply of the early settlers. These hares were very successful in New Zealand's ecosystem, and today they are widely distributed throughout the North and South Islands, but are absent from the outlying islands. Because hares aren't predators, they didn't feed on the native birds, but they did and still do cause damage to the native plants. They are known to cause damage to saplings and alpine grasslands, and also compete with livestock for grazing. Their feeding habits put them in direct competition with many of New Zealand's native flightless birds, and as there are very few native predators that could tackle them, they were mostly able to spread with ease. But luckily New Zealand has a few native birds that will tackle these hares, with one of them being one of the most unique parrots in the world. The kia is one of the most interesting species of large parrot, and there's more to this bird than meets the eye. The kia's coloration may look very dull yet beautiful at first, but when it starts to fly it shows its true colours. It flashes its more colourful feathers under its wings, and these are generally orange, yellow and blue. The kia is named so because of the noises it makes, and although they're not known for their talking like other parrots, they are known for making some interesting whinnies, and also squeals. Like most other parrots, kias are also known for being very intelligent, and are thought to be as smart as a four-year-old child. They are often known to problem solve, and will even steal things from us humans. Possibly one of the most interesting things about the kia is its diet. It is an omnivore and as well as feeding on insects and plants, it will also feed on much meatier meals. They are known to steal shearwater chicks from their nests, and are even known to feed on live sheep. This led to many kias being hunted by farmers, but luckily today they are protected. Although an adult European hare would be a very difficult prey item for these kias, they will happily target their young. Obviously kias will not have a noticeable impact on European hare numbers in New Zealand, but these clever parrots are one of the native predators that will target these invasive mammals. But for our next problem species we will be heading into the freshwaters, and when it comes to invasive fish in New Zealand, there is a lot to choose from. There is a large number of invasive catfish and rudd, but the fish I will be focusing on today is the brown trout. Now the brown trout is a very controversial invasive species, simply because it's so loved. The brown trout is invasive over a multitude of different countries around the world, but in these areas it is loved by fishermen. Brown trout put up a good fight, and are also a very good fish for eating. This means that many people will happily have brown trout in their ecosystem, but introducing brown trout is often bad news for the native species. These fish were first introduced into New Zealand in 1867, and this was from British stock that had been established in Tasmania only three years earlier. Because the brown trout is a relatively aggressive and territorial species, it quickly caused problems in New Zealand's freshwater ecosystems and started to prey on the native species. Some of the worst affected fishes were the native galaxid fishes, and these fish live a very similar life to the brown trout, apart from being a lot smaller in most cases. The brown trout was easily able to outcompete these native fish, and has also been blamed for the extinction of the New Zealand grayling. There are very few native aquatic predators that could fight back against the brown trout, but luckily there is one very famous predator that can. The New Zealand longfin eel is one of the largest eels in the world, and it is endemic to New Zealand. 
This species does exhibit a lot of sexual dimorphism, with females growing a lot larger than males and also living for a lot longer. It's thought that the females can live to up to 60 years old and can grow to over 1.5 meters in length. Unfortunately, giants such as this are rare nowadays, as the New Zealand long fin eel is currently listed as endangered. This is mostly due to overfishing and also due down to this eel's very complex life cycle. Long fin eels only breed once in their entire lives, and when they breed, they leave New Zealand and it's thought that they breed near the very deep ocean trenches around Tonga. Quickly after spawning, these adult eels soon die, and their larvae drift back to New Zealand on ocean currents. They eventually turn into glass eels and start to venture up New Zealand's fresh waters, and this is where they will spend the majority of their lives. These eels are known for being very outgoing and fearless, and they do have some incredible abilities. They are often seen moving across land, and they are even able to travel across land for two days by breathing through their skin. Juvenile longfin eels generally feed on insects and insect larvae, but as they get larger they begin to feed on fish and also New Zealand's native freshwater crayfish. Even though these eels are very large, they aren't the fastest of creatures and generally tend to hunt at night where the fish are unaware. They use their keen sense of smell to find their prey and quickly dispatch them in the darkness. Because these eels grow so large, they can easily take down a few trout each night and although they are very hard prey to catch, the New Zealand longfin eel is more than happy to take down these invasive fish. But for our next problem species, we can move back out of the water, as our next invader is the common starling. Now the common starling is also known as the European starling, as it can be found over large parts of Europe and also Asia. This bird has proven to be a very devastating invasive species, not just in New Zealand, but also in North America. Although they're not native to North America, they are now one of the most abundant birds, and they are thought to be around 200 million European starlings in North America alone. This shows just how devastating they can be, and once they become established, it's hard to get rid of them. Starlings are also known for being very social birds, and this is especially noticeable in the winter where they feed in large flocks and also roost communally. These large flocks are often a very beautiful sight, and almost move as if they were one animal. Starlings were first introduced into New Zealand in the 1800s, and today are mainly found throughout mainland New Zealand, except for densely forested or mountainous areas. They were originally introduced as pest control, as they will hunt pest insects, and will also take care of ticks on cattle and sheep. This is why they were very popular with farmers, but they can also be a pest to farmers too. They will damage grapes and fruit crops, and as they are found in such large flocks, these flocks can do a lot of damage. As well as this, they would feed on many of the endangered native plants, and would also compete with the native tui and the native bellbirds. As I've already covered, there are plenty of harmless birds in New Zealand, but there are also some predatory birds too. One of New Zealand's most famous birds of prey is the New Zealand falcon. This bird is New Zealand's only falcon and is often mistaken for the larger, more common swamp harrier. As well as being New Zealand's only falcon, it is also New Zealand's most threatened bird of prey, with only around 3,000 to 5,000 breeding pairs remaining. This bird is found both on the North and South Islands, and also several offshore islands. In these areas, it's known for being an impressive hunter, and although it's known for having a varied diet including insects, mammals, and lizards, its diet mostly consists of other birds. These birds aren't very picky when it comes to picking out a prey bird, and as well as feeding on the common starling, they will also feed on other invasive birds such as the European greenfinch, the European goldfinch, and the yellowhammer. So it really is important that this bird has a healthy population in New Zealand, because it's simply so good at targeting invasive birds. Of course it's important that we don't villainize invasive species, but there are reasons why we try to remove them. And even though I have gone through a few native predators that will take down invasive species, in most cases it is the other way around. And invasive species such as cats and weasels are decimating New Zealand's native birds. That's why they can do with your help and I've left a donation link in the description below. If you think there are any other predators that could have made it on this list then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like like these, but until next time, goodbye.